wanted to release that special grace upon the special seed that has made special decisions. We are here not because we didn't have anything else to do. This is not our spare time. We are here because we love Jesus. Anybody who loves Jesus? Amen. to Jesus. So I am very uh, delighted to see all of you because, as I say, I know Matoita Kutosia. So we don't take you for granted, and I want you to know that we appreciate you and uh, we welcome you to this uh, part, uh, the first part, which is going to be led by our uh, pastor, Roma Kawa, which is uh, the strategic planning. Uh, for our church. How many know that God is a strategic plan? Yes. <laughs> God planned from before the foundations of the world to have you. That was the plan. You are part of the plan of God. Please take your seats. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 tells me God planned to have you. That's why you are here today. And God planned the way of salvation, planned to send Jesus, and he said, and of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. Amen. That's the reason why Christ Jesus is the Lord and the Savior of our lives today. Hallelujah. Amen. How many know that God has even planned the last supper, the very last supper, which we are going to spend in his presence. That is already on paper. Mm. That is already on paper. He plans. So, what we are going to be doing the next hour or so is uh, just being as organized as our God is. We serve an organized God, and that is the reason as a church we believe in order and in being organized so that we don't Agonize because you either want to organize or you agonize. How many know that we are not going to be agonizing next year? Yeah. So, what we are doing is making sure there are no clashes, making sure we are all clear on um, how the outworking of the pattern, which is what we are going to be talking about throughout the whole council, how it's going to work out in terms of of the when. How many know what strategic planning is? Strategic planning is just answering these five questions. What is it, which is what she's going to articulate or help us through, what is it you want to do? And you know, when you are part of this church, you never become the same because even in your own personal life, you become very organized. And even when you get a job, Many of the many of the saints that have come to this church, looking like the back of the bus, they get to the job and they are promoted because we teach you how to be organized. So if you answer these five questions, whether it's for your business life, for your project, your talent, whether it is for your family, you will always come top. And I've got an example right here, my Marapu. Yeah, she is the, one of those that. Uh, uh, Apostle Charles would say, some of you, like us, came looking like the back of a bus. Today, as I speak, do you know that she has been appointed uh, um, uh, in the city council as a city council chaplain? Their company or their organization. 
Yeah, the cream always comes to the top. Yeah, you shall have a cheap prophesy. And it's from a testimony. She will never take more rushes, who might take a pan. Hallelujah. So, five questions for you to be an effective person. You answer the question, what is it you want to do? Who is going to do it? No, first of all, what is it you want to do? When must it be done? Well, okay, okay. Let me start from the beginning. At the top, you start answering the question, why? And it's, I was assuming everybody would know that. You answer the question, why am I doing what I'm doing? So like I said in my introduction, we are doing what we are doing. We are here because we love Jesus. And we are here for the cause of the gospel, for the extension of the kingdom of God. That's the reason we have put aside anything and everything to be here. Amen. Amen. So you always answer yourself the question, why am I doing what I'm doing? In other words, this one, why? Because I love Jesus. Yes. Because the first loves me. And then the second question you answer is, what is it that I must do to show my love for Christ? And this is what this session, one hour or so, is all about. And she will explain how, she, how we will do it. What am I going to do? When am I going to do it? And how am I going to do it? And by who? So this first part. We are answering, I think we are answered on the why. That's the reason we are here and that's the reason I congratulated you and released the special grace because you love Jesus. Your commitment is not in word only. It's uh, not lip service to God. Your commitment in Obatika, that's the reason we are here. So early today. So, um, Pastor Makawa will be taking us through what is it that we are going to be doing as a church in order to advance the cause of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And she's also going to be guiding us on the when, which is all these calendars that you see here. All those pieces of white pieces of paper that you see across. Those are the when we are going to do what. And then throughout the council, we talk about how we're going to be doing all these things. In fact, that's what the Thursday and Friday part of the council is. Thursday is always the policy making. How are we going to do this? How are we actually going to spread the gospel? <laughs> and Friday, we have the leaders and we... So first of all, we have the pastors and ministers on their own. We come up with policies and principles because it's always easier to make decisions with a fewer people. And then when we have tied up what we want to do, how we want to do it, when we want to do it, then to the Murira Mamomese, and then we articulate it to all the other leaders, the next layer of uh, pastors and ministers on the Friday. And then come uh, Friday night, we then have our revival night, our testimonies, and a few recaps here and there. But otherwise, that is the nature of the pastors and leaders council. So you are privileged and you are blessed if you avail yourself to hear such teachings. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, I will hand over to Pastor Ro Makawa. so grateful to my apostle for really guiding me on this one. I know I will never be the same. Everywhere I go, people just say they want you to do things because she's from a church where excellence is the, the wow. thing. So I'm, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really so thankful, apostle. I'm not taking this lightly. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the, the name of Jesus to everyone. Amen. Amen. Uh, Apostle always says, failing to plan is planning to fail. But I'm so happy to, today we are here so that we can plan our, 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 our years. So we're going to plan for 2019 and 2020 at the same time so that we, 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 we are really organized in, in, our, 
in our ministry so that we can grow those mega churches to what God wants us to be. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm the only one saying amen. <laughs> amen means what? Let it be so. So if you want it to be so, you say amen. amen. So I will just say a few things just to guide us on how we are going to, to plan our calendars. Uh, looking at the, I will look at the, the, the quarter form that we are getting into. We will be uh, mainly concentrating on uh, conference preparations. That is uh, raising the contributions. So when you are doing your calendar, make sure you put in place the things that will eff be effective to, to that. So that you prepare for conference, raising our, our contributions, planning, like uh, practicing for use music, practicing for our competitions, that are the dances, song, and scripture recital. So let's put everything together for quarter four. So when you are planning, make sure you are putting those things uh, into consideration. Then quarter one, uh, make sure you, you plan around. Just explain to us what quarter one, quarter two. <laughs> okay, quarter quarter one. It's uh, January, February, March. That's quarter one. January, February, March. So quarter one, uh, plan in such a way that you your programs will be aiming to double your mega church numbers. So you it must have uh, the events that will help you evangelize, win more souls, whatever you do, make sure you will be aiming at doubling your numbers in quarter one. And uh, also inviting other, other people like in your community to the conference. Hallelujah. So those should be your plans. So when you are doing your plans, make sure you, you consider that maybe you do uh, like outreaches where you say a lot about our conference, that conference is coming in Easter, so let's do this and that and that and that. So that should be your plan for quarter one. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. Are we still together? Yes. Then quarter two, that's, uh, I said quarter one, it's January, February, March, so April, May, June, that's our quarter two. So uh, we'll be now planning to like branching out. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are raising more leaders in our in our mega churches through the CILD, uh, through the diploma, through the degree. So we're expecting to, uh, people be now be ready to be branching out because I, I, after our conference, I know the conference will be having uh, ordination, graduation. So we'll be having even more leaders. So we need to branch out, give them branches, give them work to start even their own branches somewhere. So this is this should be our focus in quarter two, branching out. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Quarter three, uh, we'll be focusing on growing the number of plants in the spirit and in numbers. Growing the, the new plants <coughs> in the spirit and numbers. So it's about growing the new plants in quarter three. Then quarter four, I think it's the same as the, the one that I started with, where we, we prepare for our conference. We practice, we do the contributions for our conference. Hallelujah. So be guided by those when you are, you are doing your, your planning. Then uh, there's uh, also, you should also include the dates for uh, foundation and orientation and CIFD fast tracks in your planning as a mega church. Hallelujah. Can I explain that? Can I help explain that? You know how this year we successfully held the first track CILD? The first track CILD or the condensed certificate in leadership uh, development, I think over eight or nine weeks. We are going to be doing that. I wish Stanley was here. Please call Stanley. We are going to continue to be doing that every year in the in Ju 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 June, July, August. June, July, August. Get the dates from, from from Stanley. That is from an international office point of view. This is how we are organized. But 
there are some people in your assembly that missed the train this year. Chitima LD, whose eyes of understanding were not yet opened. Or maybe their ministers, their eyes were not opened, so they missed the train. So we agreed in our review of the CILD fast track, Kuti. We're going to present one more opportunity for CILD fast track before April. But it's got to be this year. It's got to be quarter four. For those that missed the train in your church, not you. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people in your congregation.